I'm Amy Gross and I'm a fiber sculptor and momentum gallery artist. When Jordan and Shifra asked us to videotape our worlds while we're all practicing social distancing, I thought it was a wonderful idea and at the same time I was absolutely filled with terror at the idea of videotaping myself because this is not something I do. Um, but I'm going to give it a try. I'm also going to apologize beforehand for my socially distanced hair. And uh, in the meantime, I would love to take you on a tour of my studio. This is the daily commute of seven steps down the hall. My studios have always been small rooms in the houses that I've lived in. So the boundaries between work life and everything else has blurred a lot for me. And I've brought a lot of the outside world into it, so much so that I think it's eating up the walls. But I think the way we process life, the way we try to understand it and remember it is a lot like my walls, uh, a combination of real things and invented things and photos and drawings all collage together. Ever since I was a kid, I've been really fascinated by tiny things, by life forms that you have to center in to see. When you do, everything else seems to still and the outer world recedes. You kind of lose sense of your own scale. You can't assume that the visible world is the only one of consequence. And it makes you realize that everyone is under the effect of the tiniest of things. Everything is the symbiosis of large and small. I work with very ordinary materials. For me, uh, the magic comes from trying to turn craft star yarn and beads and fabric and paper and wire um, into things that end up in that uncanny valley of real, not real. Yarn is like paint for me and so are beads and so is thread. And they can do nearly anything you ask them to do. If you place them in a different context, they become seeds, they become soil, moss, berries, cells. When I began making things after years as a commercial designer, I tended to work exclusively small and often put my sculptures under glass in a sort of protective way, uh, protective for the objects and protective of me as a new artist, I guess, but eventually they needed to be set free. For the past few years, I've been working on larger objects and installations, or my versions of the urge to work larger. In my case, this involves a lot of small elements clustering together and filling rooms, as if microscopic life grew together and merged with the life that we can see every day. Spora mutatis has gone into semi-retirement and um, even though it has a specific order, once it came back into the studio, it kind of decided to do its own thing, which I think it might have done if it actually had been alive. I make leaves from photos I've taken and manipulated in the computer and uh, also the same for mushrooms. Uh, they're often the same mushroom or leaf over and over and over again. It's not nature. It's fake nature, uh, all made up. I can't match the intricacy and complexity of the natural world. I can't compete. So the best thing I can do is what humans do, we try to impose our own rules uh, in our spaces and in our heads and tell our own stories. A few months ago, I started to rethink the glass dome. There's the idea that if you try to protect something, you can control it. 
And it's been really interesting seeing what happens when you create boundaries. It's a lot like turning inward, something that we're being forced to do lately, both physically and emotionally, and finding out about the way you really work. That's much harder to do in times of unlimited options. This is the vivarium I'm working on right now. It doesn't have a name yet. One thing I love about this format is the way I get to imagine not only the part of a life form that blooms out in the air, but what happens below the surface. The uncovered, hidden side of things are so fascinating and always provides that wonder that we can usually only get from museum exhibits and ant farms and beautiful cross-section illustrations in books. This part of my life has been so unexpected and surprising. I spent so many years working virtually that I'm still amazed by the process of working by hand using real things and so grateful that I get to come into this room every day and figure out ways to turn what I see around me and think about and obsess over into these still solid objects that I can see and hold. Thank you, Jordan and Shifra, and everyone who loves Momentum Gallery for giving these things a place in the world. It has truly changed my life.